I, I gotta check one thing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to the August 6th, 2018 informal county commission meeting. Uh, we have two people that would like to address the commission. Uh, I would remind both folks that are addressing the commission to please give us uh, your name and address. And if you would limit your comments to three minutes, you'll hear a tone that goes off when you hear that. Please try to wrap your comments up. And if you continue too much long, longer past that, uh, I will uh, ask you to wrap your comments up. So first all we, off, we have Mr. Barry Smitto. My name is Barley Twang. Nashville pays me not to sing. I'm as country as a hay bale. Oops, wrong hat, wrong speech. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm desperate. I've been here seven times. We desperately need your, you to pay attention, so I humbly tell you the following brief resume. Before my internal eye cancer, I successfully managed a national team for Lego and regional teams for Epson and Nabisco. I wrote the training manuals for those teams. When I merchandised Disney movies, I won the friendly award and a special award they created just for me for my ability to analyze and problem solve. Here it is, it's my binky. I've just spent on my final desperate 32 page animal welfare summary. It has new urgent quotes from separate animal shelter officials that prove a pattern of heartbreaking overcapacity shelters all over the U.S. with 1.5 million cats and dogs euthanized every year. Some shelters euthanize hundreds of kittens a year. I've talked with animal shelter directors who support new methods we desperately need, including getting animal welfare into public school lessons. We need to increase the frequency and urgency of public service announcements. We're not even close to adequately educating and communicating with the public regarding the problems that have been coming for years. We'll be, you'll be receiving copies of the summary, which can be seen now at www.savemillions.wordpress.com. Many staff and volunteers have worked very hard for years, but there's still so much suffering and death. We need everyone to realize that animals are so loved by so many people. When we all join together, we'll have tremendous power to affect legislation and media coverage and who gets elected. Our Governor Haslam has four more months in office. Mayor Dirt, we need you to call him and get the National Governors Association to initiate a coordinated response across all levels of government as they've done with other devastating problems. That's quote marks. Many people believe this is crucial. Reasons why are explained in the summary. We have people with different beliefs and non-believers working together to save lives and we need this to continue. Mayor Dirt, I'm glad you and our commissioners talk about your love for God. I believe the God, the God values the lives of all creation more than anything else and we have a tremendous responsibility to help. Medical experts say staff and volunteers who see animals suffering must keep themselves emotionally healthy or they'll be at high risk of depression, anxiety, physical illness, and even suicide. It will be a huge mistake for us to continue on without adding new methods to save lives that animal shelter directors say we need. We must also get the national governors to make this a top priority. If we don't make all this happen, millions of lives will be lost that we could have saved. Hundreds of millions of tax dollars will continue to be lost nationally, and this money could have been used to help people and animals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smitto. Ms. Stacy Hopwood. Sorry. Good evening, my name is Stacy Hopwood. I live at 625 Dover Road. I'm here to speak about the resolution concerning Montgomery County entering into an agreement with Fort Campbell to provide animal control services on post. I hope that each of the commissioners have taken the time to read the detailed email that I sent you last Friday evening as it raises many more concerns than I can address in three minutes here. I'm asking the commission to vote no on this resolution. I do not think this agreement is in the best interest of Montgomery County Animal Control, our residents and animals, or the residents and animals of Fort Campbell. 
Our focus should be on what is best for Montgomery County. This agreement will add a host of new problems and concerns dealing with Fort Campbell's rules and regulations, which are completely different from ours, and which will take the focus of the department away from our community and our animal problems. For the first time in the 25 years that I have lived here, I feel optimistic about the future of our animal control. I feel that Director Kasky was a great choice. He brings leadership and managerial skills to the table, something which our animal control department has always been sorely lacking in. He has already implemented many new programs and made great improvements in the shelter and overall operations. As you know, last month in this chamber, new animal control regulations were approved that drastically changed the way animal control does business. Director Kasky and his team should be focused on implementing and rolling out those new changes to ensure that they're going to work for the betterment of the animals in our community. I believe he should be given the time and the support he needs to make our animal control the best it can be before additional outside duties are piled on. I also believe that the agreement, the agreement as it is written will create a huge budgetary issue as it was based on Fort Campbell's 2017 intake numbers which do not include feral cats or owner surrenders, both of which our animal control will be tasked from taking in from Fort Campbell. Another question is what will happen to those feral cats? Feral cats are not adoptable, which leaves two options, euthanizing them or spay, neuter, and release. That will only be an option if Fort Campbell will allow feral cats to be returned to post and released after they are altered. Regardless of which route is taken, the agreement must be adjusted to account for either much higher euthanasia numbers or more spay and neuters, because the way it stands right now, Montgomery County taxpayers would be paying for services for those Fort Campbell animals in the very near future. Under this agreement, Fort Campbell owner surrenders must be held for three days, where Montgomery County allows for immediate adoption. Facilities that stay at full capacity do not have the luxury of holding owner surrendered animals. So if we are required to do so for Fort Campbell, euthanasia rates for Montgomery County's animals are likely to increase due to lack of space. It's being presented that we will have access to additional kennels at the Fort Campbell shelter, but what's not being said is that that facility currently stays full without the additional burden of owner surrenders and feral cats. I'm uncertain exactly where the space for the increased number of animals will come from. Full kennels mean increased euthanasia. I feel that this agreement has the potential to increase the euthanasia rates that everyone in this county has been working so hard to reduce. Also, Montgomery County must pay for the vehicles and the gas to travel to Fort Campbell as many times a day as they're required to, and they must provide the food for all Fort Campbell's animals. Those of you that may not know, Animal Control currently solicits for food donations because their budget isn't covering the required amount of food for Montgomery County's animals. So now we're gonna be tasked to provide food for Fort Campbell's animals as well. I hope that I've given you some things to think about. I do ask that you read my email if you have not already, and I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. We will now call the meeting to order. We have several proclamations tonight, so I'm going to step down here to the side podium. If I could have uh, Montgomery County Trustee Miss Brenda Radford come forward, please. Ms. Radford, I know you've attended many of these meetings, I have. so uh, I have a proclamation that I'd like to read to you. Uh, this is a proclamation by the county mayor. Whereas Brenda Radford began her career with Montgomery County government in 1975 at the trustee's office serving as a senior deputy trustee. In 1998, Brenda resigned her position in the trustee's office when she was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 2 in 1998 and served through August 31st, 2006. And whereas Brenda Radford served her district as county commissioner by serving on numerous boards and committees, by serving as chaplain for the commission for two years, and by volunteering to serve as their interim animal control director while the committee searched for a new director. And whereas in 2006, Brenda was elected to the office of the Montgomery County trustee 
She was reelected in 2010 and again in 2014. Among her many accomplishments during her career as trustee, Brenda was instrumental in administering and assisting Montgomery County taxpayers with tax relief programs, allowing qualifying homeowners to apply for assistance with county taxes. And whereas Brenda has re received numerous honors and awards, both as a county commissioner and as trustee, and her achievements have included being named the 20, 2010 Middle Tennessee Trustee of the Year, and whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of herself in service to her community. We wish Brenda all the best in her retirement years. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the sixth day of August, August 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby proclaim appreciation to Bren Brenda Radford for her years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government. Brenda, thank you so much for your service to Montgomery County. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Why don't you step out here so she can okay. get a picture? Uh, at this time, if I could have uh, Mr. Frank Mir, our director of our, our veteran services office, and all of our veteran treatment court mentor corps uh, to come forward, please. Some of y'all can come around this way if you'd like to. I have a proclamation I'd like to read, but before I read it, uh, I'd like to just personally thank each and every one of you for what you do for our Veterans Treatment Court. I, I think I've maybe missed one graduation since I've been mayor. But to uh, go to your graduation ceremonies and hear the stories of the people that have been involved in Veterans Treatment Court. Uh, I know Judge Goebel does a lot. Frank's been, uh, been with Veterans Treatment Court for a little while. But you mentors, y'all are the ones that make the program what it is. So I want to thank each and every one of you. I have a proclamation I'd like to read. Whereas the Montgomery County Veterans Treatment Court Mentor Corps assists the Veterans Treatment Court program by mentoring and helping participants stay motivated and moving forward in the program. And whereas the Corps is a team of veterans who willingly volunteer their time, donate personal funds for the program, coordinates with VTC, VTC staff for events outside of the court to involve participants and their families, attends court sessions as well as mentor training events, provides transportation, home care and family support in times of need, provides continuous support for Veterans Treatment Court for life participants by creating a strong, enthusiastic, and positive su support group to help encourage those participants to become mentors as well. 
And whereas the Corps is one of the key components that make the VTC a successful program, they are examples of honor, duty, and selfless service with the utmost dedication dedication, excuse me, to the participants in all their needs while going through the rigorous VTC program. And whereas the Corps provides an open line of communication and support with VTC participants and are willing to provide a positive voice and level head in times of crisis or just daily life, they lead by example and demand that mentees demonstrate high standards of personal contact, morality, and citizenry and whereas the Mentor Corps gives participation of the VTC the support that only a veteran of the, arms, veteran of the armed forces can provide because they understand the participants' mentality and the way of thinking. The mentors live by the creed, leave no veteran behind. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, Tennessee, do hereby applaud the mentors of the Veteran Treatment Corps for their selfless dedication in mentoring the participants of the Veterans Treatment Court Program and, and striving to restore veterans to their honored status within our community. Thank you to each and every one of you. I joined uh, the VTC team about four months ago and I have seen what they do day in and day out volunteering their time and showing the veterans that they can do it, that they can strive. I also would like to mention that Commissioner Monroe Gildersleeve is one of the mentors at the VTC. Judge. Well, I didn't plan on saying anything, but all I can do tonight is tell you that they are the backbone, backbone of our Veterans Treatment Court. They. Uh, or where the rubber hits the road and they make things happen. And I can't thank them enough for making our program such a huge success. Thank you, guys. I think Michelle wants y'all yeah. over here. If y'all kind of right in the slide center. Over. Slide over in some of Yeah, maybe two rows, slide over in the center. We got, we got, we got to go. At this time, uh, we have several proclamations to uh, present to our outgoing commissioners, and uh, but I want to read each one of them because I think each one of them is worthy of being read. Uh, but before I do, uh, we had a little um, food honoring those folks uh, that are leaving our commission, and I just want to reiterate a couple of things that I said over there tonight. Uh, I get comments about Montgomery County everywhere I go. And probably the one I'm most proud of is that your county commission gets it. Uh, each of you that are leaving us uh, next month, you've shown a selfless heart. Some of you have been here, as Commissioner Wyatt said, for only two years. Some of you have been here four years, and some of you have been here longer. And I just want to personally thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for your service to our community. I think it takes a very, very special person to put their name on the ballot and run for a public office and serve. It's not good pay, 
uh, you get a lot of phone calls, you do a lot of work, and I know that you run in a district, but each and every one of you, I can say, has served all of Montgomery County, so I want to thank each of you. With that being said, Mr. Ed Baggett, Ed, if you'd come forward. Whereas Ed Baggett was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 3 in 2002 and served through August 2018 for a total of 16 years in Montgomery County governmental services as a county commissioner. Whereas Commissioner Baggett served his district in Montgomery County faithfully and dil diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners, having served on the Airport Authority Liaison Committee Agricultural Extension Committee, Parks Committee, SMR Municipal Solid Waste Region Board, Bi-County Solid Waste Management Board, Personnel Advisory Committee Board, Residential Development Commission. I guess you served on all of them, hadn't you? Just about. I'll keep reading them though. Per uh, Residential Development Commission, Loss Control Committee, Nominating Committee, 2012 Growth Plan Coordinating Committee, Fire Protection Committee, Committee on Committees, Rules Committee. <laughs> Reappointment Redistricting Ad Hoc Committee, Building and Codes Committee, Budget Committee, Nursing Home Committee, 2004 Consolidated Government Study Committee, RPC Land Use Steering Committee, and served as a chairperson pro tem for the legislative body. And whereas Commissioner Baggett's departure from the county's legislative body will be a huge loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, and whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community. And whereas we wish Commissioner Baggett well in all his future endeavors, he will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August, 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Ed Baggett for 16 years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of County Commissioners. Ed, thank you. you want to say anything? Okay, I think she wants to get a picture. Commissioner Joe White, as Commissioner White's making his way up here, we uh, had a little fun with Commissioner White. The, the first time he spoke at the county commission meeting, if y'all don't know him, he's an attorney. And by trade, most of the time he's deliberating, he's standing up walking around. So he stood up and walked around, he realized that the mic wasn't portable. And uh, I think he's, uh, I think you've learned your lesson, but Joe. Yes. Uh, I'd like to read this proclamation to you. Whereas Joe White was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing districts 4A and 4B in 2016 and served through August 31st, 2018 for a total of two years in Montgomery County governmental services as a county commissioner. Whereas Commissioner White served his districts in Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners, having served on the Ag Extension Committee, Purchasing Committee, Investment Committee, Jail and Juvenile Committee, Economic and Community Development Board, and the Montgomery County Fair Committee. And whereas Commissioner White's departure from the county's legislative body will be a loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, Whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community. Whereas Commissioner White will be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners, we wish him well on all future endeavors. Now therefore I, Mayor Jim, now therefore I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Joe White for two years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of Commissioners. Joe, thank you so much. Thank you. Would you like to say anything? No. You sure? No, I'm sure? Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Commissioner Robert Gibbs. Commissioner Gibbs. 
Whereas Robert Gibbs was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 5A and 5B in 2002 and served through August 31, 2018 for a total of 16 years in Montgomery County governmental services as a county commissioner. Whereas Commissioner Gibbs served his district Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners having served on the nominating committee, school liaison committee, delinquent tax sales and release committee, jail and juvenile committee, board of zone and appeals, beer board, audit committee, investment committee, fire protection committee, joint land and acquisition committee, ethics committee, legislative liaison committee, loss control committee, and purchasing committee. And whereas Commissioner Gibbs departure from the legislative body will be a loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, whereas it's appropriate and suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community. Whereas we wish Commissioner Gibbs good health and happiness in years to come, he will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Robert Gibbs for 16 years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner right. Gibbs, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Would you like to say anything? Okay. Commissioner Ron Sokol. You know, I, I have to tell a story about Commissioner Sokol too. I try to go around before every meeting and shake every commissioner's hands and sometimes I get to all of them, sometimes I don't. And, uh, but every time I go and shake Mr. Sokol's hand or Commissioner Sokol's hand, I ask him, how you doing? And he always says, just peachy, just peachy. So whereas Ron Sokol was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 8 in 2002 and served through August 2018 for a total of 16 years in Montgomery County government services as a county commissioner. Whereas Commissioner Sokol served his district Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners having served on the beer board Building and Codes Committee, Jail and Juvenile Committee, Loss, Loss Control Committee, Public Records Commission, Airport Authority Liaison Committee, School Liaison Committee, Legislative Liaison Committee, Nominating Committee, Building Advisory Committee, Audit Committee, Delinquent Tax Sales and Release Committee, Information Systems Now IT Committee, Residential Development Commission, and served as Chairperson Pro Tem for the Legislative Body. Whereas Commissioner Sokol's departure from the county's legislative body will be a huge loss to the citizens of Montgomery County and whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made to this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community and whereas we wish Commissioner Sokol good health and happiness in years to come, he will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Now therefore I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee on the 6th day of August 2018 and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Ron Sokol for 16 years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of County Commissioners. Commissioner Sokol, thank you. Thank you, sir. Would you like to say anything? No. Commissioner John Genus. Whereas Commissioner, whereas John Genus was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 9 in 2007 and served through August 2018 for a total of 11 years in Montgomery County governmental services as a county commissioner. Whereas Commissioner Genius served his district and Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners having served on the School Liaison Committee, Building and Codes Committee, Parks Committee, Rules Committee, Veteran Services Organization, Nominating Committee, Legislative Liaison Committee, Emergency Medical Services Committee, 
Airport Authority Liaison Committee, Purchasing Committee, Delinquent Tax Sales and Release Committee, Loss Control Committee, and the Veterans Nursing Home Ad Hoc Committee. Whereas Commissioner Genius' departure from the county's legislative body will be a loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, and whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community. Whereas we wish Commissioner Genius good health and happiness in the years to come, he will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August, 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner John Genius for 11 years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Genius, thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Commissioner Martha Brockman. Good evening. Whereas Martha Brockman was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 10 in 2006 and served through August 2018 for a total of 12 years in Montgomery County Governmental Services as a County Commissioner. Whereas Commissioner Brockman served her district in Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners, having served on the Community Action Agency, Delinquent Tax Sales and Release Committee, Emergency Medical Services Committee, Jail and Juvenile Committee, Purchasing Committee, Audit Committee, Building Advisory Committee, VSO, Building and Codes Committee, Beer Board, GNRC, Aging and Disability Board, and the SMR Municipal Solid Waste Board, whereas Commissioner Brockman's departure from the county's legislative body will be a huge loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of herself in service to her community, and whereas we wish Martha much happiness in the future, she will definitely be missed by friends and fellow commissioners on the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August, 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Martha Brockman for 12 years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of County Commissioners. Ms. Brockman, thank you. Would you like to say anything? Commissioner Robert Nichols. Sergeant Major. Whereas Robert Nichols was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 12 in 2009 and served through August 2018 for a total of nine years, whereas Commissioner Nichols served his district and Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners, having served on the Fire Protection Committee, Nominating Committee, Regional Planning Commission, Regional Historic Zoning Committee, Veteran Services Organization, Personnel Advisory Committee, Legis Legislative Liaison Committee, Budget Committee, Purchasing Committee, Regional Airport Authority, Veterans Nursing Home Ad Hoc Committee, Ethics Committee, Downtown District Partnership, the Clarksville Montgomery County Growth Coordinating and Urban Growth Boundary Committee, Civil War 105th Sesquicentennial, 150th. 150th, thank you, Committee, <laughs> and Two Rivers Planning Committee, and the Civic Plaza Steering Committee. He also served on the Interview and Selection Committee for the Director of the VSO and served as Chairman Pro Tem for the Legislative Body. Whereas Commissioner Nichols traveled to Washington, D.C. many times for the citizens for Fort Campbell, but his biggest accomplishment 
was convincing the Tennessee Veterans Affairs that managed the Tennessee Veterans Nursing Home to locate and construct a veterans nursing home in its current location in Montgomery County. Whereas Commissioner Nichols' departure from the county's legislative body will be a huge loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, and it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Robert Nichols for nine years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of Commissioners. We wish him good health and happiness in the years to come. He will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Commissioner Nichols, thank you. Commissioner Audrey Tooley. Thank you. Whereas Audrey Tooley was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 13 in 2014 and served through August 2018 for a total of four years in Montgomery County governmental services as a county commissioner. And whereas Commissioner Tooley served her district and Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners, having served on the Audit Committee, Beer Board, Nominating Committee, Parks Committee, Purchasing Committee, IT Committee, and the Library Board. Whereas Commissioner Tooley's departure from the county's legislative body will be a huge loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of herself in service to her community. Whereas we wish Commissioner Tooley good health and happiness in the years to come, she will definitely be missed by her friends and fellow commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August, 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Audrey Tooley for four years of loyal and dedicated service to the Montgomery County government and the Board of County Commissioners. Ms. Tooley, thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say anything? Please do. Just want to take this opportunity to thank my fellow commissioners. We have worked well together, and I will miss you. And I see my competitor who has won is here, and I congratulate him, Walker. And I know that he has some things to do that I didn't do, and I, I commend you on winning this election. Just want you all to know. I'm leaving this to do another endeavor. I'm getting married next year, got engaged, and I look forward to being with my mate uh, probably just a year that I'll be running again for something. But uh, I'm just appreciative of the opportunity. Thank you so much. Commissioner Tommy Vallejos. Whereas Tommy Vallejos was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 14 in 2010 and served through August 2018 for a total of eight years in Montgomery County governmental services as a county commissioner. Whereas Com Commissioner Vallejos served his district and Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners, having served on the Airport Authority Liaison Committee, Bi-County Solid Waste Management Board, Budget Committee, Economic Development Council, Jail and Juvenile Committee, Loss Control Committee, Nominating Committee, Legislative Liaison Committee, School Liaison Committee, Delinquent Tax Sale and Release Committee, Building Advisory Committee, Rules Committee, Personnel Advisory Committee, Reapportionment Redistricting Ad Hoc Committee, Rocket Town Exploratory Committee, Mount Olive Cemetery Cleanup Committee, and served as Chairman Pro Tem for the Legislative Body. Whereas Commissioner Vallejos 
departure from the county's legislative body will be a loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community. Whereas we wish Commissioner Vallejos the best of luck in all his future endeavors, he will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August, 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Tommy Vallejos for eight years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Vallejos, thank you. Commissioner Wallace Red. Commissioner Red. Sorry, I missed the. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. That's okay. Whereas Wallace Red was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 16 in 2014 and served through August 2018 for a total of four years of Montgomery County government services as a county commissioner. Whereas Commissioner Red served his district in Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners, having served on the Beer Board, Emergency Medical Services Committee, Residential Development Commi Commission, School Liaison Committee, Legislative Liaison Committee, and Nominating Committee. Whereas Commissioner Red's departure from the county's legislative body will be a loss to the citizens of Montgomery County whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community. Whereas we wish Commissioner Red the best of luck in all his future endeavors, he will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Wallace Red for four years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Red, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Would you like to say anything? No. <laughs> Commissioner Jason Hodges. Commissioner. Whereas Jason Hodges was elected to the Montgomery County Board of Commissioners representing District 17 in 2014 and served through August 2018 for a total of four years in Montgomery County government services as a county commissioner. And whereas Commissioner Hodges served his district in Montgomery County faithfully and diligently and contributed invaluably to the total deliberations of the Board of County Commissioners, having served on the airport Authority Liaison Committee, Delinquent Tax Sales and Release Committee, Personnel Advisory Committee, Rules Committee, Legislative Liaison Committee, Information Technology Committee, Civic Plaza Steering Committee, and the Two Rivers Board. And whereas Commissioner Hodges' departure from the county's legislative body will be a loss to the citizens of Montgomery County, and whereas it is appropriate that suitable recognition be made of this citizen who gave so much of himself in service to his community, Whereas we wish Commissioner Hodges the best of luck in all his future endeavors, he will definitely be missed by his friends and fellow commissioners. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, on the 6th day of August, 2018, and on behalf of the citizens of Montgomery County, do hereby express appreciation to Commissioner Jason Hodges for four years of loyal and dedicated service to Montgomery County government and the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Hodges, thank you. You want to say anything?
right, commissioners, we have two zoning resolutions tonight. Our first resolution is CZ 13 2018, application of Don Teasley and Lisa McCain from R1 to R4. This was deferred from June. Uh, I'm not, Mr. I don't think you have a, a new presentation to present. Uh, commissioners, if y'all have a question of Mr. Tyndall, I'll be, uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, let you ask a question. I am gonna allow us to have another public hearing as well. Uh, and so I know there's some people that are leaving and if y'all have, a, anybody have a question of Mr. Tyndall? Uh, Mayor, all I can report on this is that the applicant continues to work with the community there. We've seen a couple of emails and renderings going back and forth and I think they're headed in the right direction. Thank you, sir. All right, at this time, we'll go into public hearing to hear comments relating to CZ 13 2018. Uh, I would remind anyone that likes to speak of our rules, uh, please limit, let us know your name, your address. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, you'll hear a tone go off and we'd ask you to wrap your comments up. Does uh, anybody have anyone to speak on behalf of CZ 13 2018? Good evening. Um, I'd like to start off. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Daniel Welch. I'll be acting as the the, uh, the agent on this piece of property. Um, we, uh, you know, we first got off to not such a good start, but uh, um, I've, we've I've met with uh, the Harper Road community people probably about three or four different times, and and listen to their their opinions. Listen listen to what you know their suggestions. So I went went back. I went back three or four times. We put it back on paper to see if it's going to work for me. Um, and and tried to find a compromise with the people so that so that hopefully that we could come to some kind of agreement. Um, <clears throat> I've sent out an email, a, a mass email to the majority of the people that are directly affected by this piece of property, and asked what I did. Is I sent that out and I copied a a, 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 a rendering, a front rendering um, of of some of a home that's that's similar to that. To, to what this project would be like. And it would be very similar to Wilson Green, kind of the front entrance of Wilson Green. That's, that's kind of my concept. Um, so I just I sent that email out and I asked the people to, to give me their response to see what they said. And uh, um, I believe they liked it. What I did is I got those responses back and I forwarded those to Mr. David Harper. Um, and I, I really like to ask for another 30 to 60 day um, deferral so that we could come up some, with some uh, restrictive covenants. Um, so if I could get, have that time to possibly do that, then I could get back with the people on Harper Road and then try to come to some somewhat of agreement. And uh, that's all I have to say. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer them at this time. Any questions of Mr. Welch? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience to speak on behalf of CZ 13 2018? Anyone in the audience to speak in opposition to CZ 13 2018? Name and address? Ma'am? Name and address. I am Shannon Jones. I live at 219 Harper Road. I actually back up, or one of the residents that are directly affected to this. Uh, to back up, Mr. Welch, we are not necessarily against this, propo this proposed project whatsoever. We are very much for having another continuance, even though I know this is very highly unlikely. Not unlikely, um, not in the normal things. Um, Mr. Welch has worked with the residents. We have gone back and forth. He wanted Project ABC. We wanted Project XYZ. We are in the process of meeting in the middle. So we would like a continuance to be able to get all the details that we want. Uh, the residents are very much concerned to make sure that once this property is turned R4, that we are assured certain restrictions will be put on the property uh, to make sure that if, when Mr. Welch develops it, or if somebody else ends up developing it, that we know exactly what is gonna be able to go on that property. So we are in favor of a continuance. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions of Ms. Jones? I don't think there is any. Thank you, ma'am. 
Anyone else to speak in opposition to CZ 13 2018? All right, we will now close the public hearing on CZ 13 2018. Mr. Tyndall, CZ 16 2018, application of Mary Coke from AG to R2D. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, it was our application, uh, CZ 16 2018. Uh, the acreage is 17.53 acres off Sango Road, approximately 825 feet east of Sango Drive. Currently zoned ag, requested to go to R2D, which allows for duplex development. Here's the aerial of the, uh, of the property out there. Uh, it's a gently, uh, gently sloped agricultural field. It is within the UGB of the growth plan and is in the Sango planning area. The applicant's wishes is to become a duplex development. Uh, historical estimates for this property size would be 55 units. Uh, applicant's estimate is 58 units. We received several comments from city and county departments. Uh, one of note is the city engineer utility district. City council would have to approve a utility main extension. No sewer is currently available in the area, but is available nearby. Uh, other comments received uh, had no concerns or no comments. Uh, this is the piece of property off uh, Sango Road out there, looking to the south. The property here is to the right. This is the property to the east of it. The property is down past the telephone pole on the left in this photo. And this is looking back from uh, the corner of Sango Drive. There's a church cemetery there. Uh, the small clearing between the trees is the uh, small farm area behind there, the property in question. Potential impact of proposed development is increased traffic, noise, and light to the area. Uh, planning Commission staff recommended approval and the Regional Planning Commission recommended approval on the following recommendations. The proposed zoning is consistent with the adopted land use plan. The R2D zoning permits for the development of mixed use densities, single family residences, and duplexes on individual lots. It's encouraged to maintain a des desirable mix of uses and housing types in the area. There is adequate infrastructure that serves the site or could be served the site in the case of sewer, and there are no adverse environmental impacts at this time. I'd also like to share uh, a rendering was left on each one of your desks that was not done by myself or the Regional Planning Commission. I believe the applicant got here early and left it. Uh, they did bring this rendering to our meeting. Uh, in no way do we actually endorse this or anything. This is actually just a, a concept of what could happen out there. This would be legal under the proposed zoning uh, for a, a duplex development. They're proposing potentially gating it off and being a private development out there. But um, a lot of the design factors would be worked out during the site plan or subdivision phase in the future. That's all I have at this time, Mayor. Any questions of Mr. Tyndall on CZ 16 2018? Commissioner Nichols. Yes, thank you. Uh, could you show everyone uh, the uh, proximal location of the uh, city limits, please? The city limits, do we have that map here? I'm not sure about that, but the city limits ends at Wilson Green, which is approximately a mile to the west on this photo. I'm not sure the city limits would appear in this. Uh, this okay. is Savannah Chase. Uh, you're, you're pretty much all out in the county at this point this area. All right. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Tyndall? Thank you, Mr. Tyndall. We'll now go into public hearing uh, for CZ 16 2018. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on behalf of this application? Council, uh, my name is Todd Morris. I reside at 501 Stonegate Drive. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you might have about the development, the properties, the proposed buildings, or anything going up there. Mr. Harper, do you have a question of Mr. Morris? I do. Thanks, Thanks, Mayor. Mr. Morris, could you briefly describe what type of community you'd like to, to do out there? Um, 
Well, we want to do an upscale community, something that's not typically done a lot in Clarksville. Um, basically, if you've seen the proposed drive going in, it's one road, one cul-de-sac. There's a roundabout halfway down. There's landscape mediums all the way down the road. So one side of the road se just separates them. Um, walking paths all the way around, not necessarily sidewalks. They, uh, the, the lots are deep enough that uh, the proposed buildings won't just be lined up one right after another. They'll have setback staggers. So the walking paths will meander through. They'll actually be able to be landscaping trees between the path and what would be the curb. Um, as far as the duplexes, obviously two units per. There's up to four um, different plans. We're going towards main level masters on everything. Um, some two bedrooms, some three bedrooms, some th three bedrooms with a bonus room. Um, but mainly upscale, trying to you know do something that's not done here. Gated entrance. Um, which until it's all done will be hard to, with all the contractors and everything coming in and out will be tough, but once it's done, um, gated, so everybody will be able to come in and go, um, gate shut, coming and going for safety purposes, um, but just mainly upscale, something that's not around here much. Thanks for coming down. I really appreciate someone thinking outside the box and doing something I think that's we need in Sango, and I certainly think would be appreciated and I think it'd be a welcome addition. Well, thank you. We know the Sango area has been undeveloped for a long time and things are moving that away. And um, it's just, a, I feel like it's a good area to do something upscale like this. Yeah. Any other questions of Mr. Morris? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience to speak on behalf of CZ 16 2018? Anyone in the audience to speak in opposition to CZ 16 2018? Anyone to speak in opposition? We will now close the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you, ma'am. Excuse me. I'm Connie Matthews and I live at 3461 Sango Road. I'm directly across from this property. Um, I've lived there my entire life. It's not necessarily that I'm opposed to this particularly. I think my problem is, is that there's so much growth in Sango within the past two years, within a mile and a half of my house, there's been four new subdivisions. And it just seems like that everything constantly gets approved. And I don't know about our traffic. I mean, as it is now, it's our, it's increased, it's hard to get across the road, um, to get your mail, um, to mow the grass, it's hard. You know, our schools are overcrowding. And I just would like everybody co to consider our future in that area. I'm, I'm pleased that this is gonna be a nice um, gated community. That helps my property value, I appreciate that. But I just, like I said, it's just, I feel like that maybe we could just like maybe take a break and let Sango grow and let's see how our schools are affected and how our traffic's affected before we just constantly approve every development. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions of Ms. Matthews? All right. Anyone else to speak? in opposition to CZ 16 2018. We will now close the public hearing. Mr. Tyndall, thank you. Uh, Mayor, I have one more announcement if I could uh, just take a moment. Uh, this is uh, this Thursday the 9th and next Thursday on the 16th at 6 p.m. we'll have a public hearing for the growth plan update, uh, which is before the Regional Growth Plan Commission right, right now. Thank you, sir. We'll take a little quick recess to allow some folks to exit the chambers.
Commission, Commissioners, is Resolution 1881, a resolution to amend the budget to accept joint grant funds from the Bureau of Justice Assistance of the United States Department of Justice. This is a, uh, a grant that we receive every year. There's no uh, matching funds required. Anyone have any questions regarding 1881? Resolution 1882, resolution authorizing the acceptance of grant funds from the Tennessee Department of Child Services. Again, this is a grant we receive every year. There's no matching dollars uh, required for this grant. Any questions on 1882? Resolution 1883, resolution to enter into agreement with the United States government, Fort Campbell, Kentucky to provide certain identifiable animal care services on post at Fort Campbell for compensation. Uh, I know there may be some questions. Anybody, Mr. Kasky's here. Uh, anyone have any questions regarding 1883? Commissioner Butts. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> thank you for coming. Um, I, I've been contacted by several of my constituents that are or um, want me to vote against this. And I do also sit on the Animal Control Committee. There, the main question I have tonight is, are we gonna stretch ourselves too thin by taking on Fort Campbell when we've got a lot to do here? Which, I, which by the way, I think you're doing a, a fantastic job. Well, I appreciate that. But I, a lot of the people in my district are, are asking, they think we're gonna be stretching ourselves too thin when we've got issues here that we're working on. I know we just passed some things. They want to get them implemented. So could you kind of tell me what you what you think about sure. that? Oh, I, com I completely understand those concerns. Um, I do have uh, the utmost faith in my staff and the department to be able to take on any challenge that we might face. Uh, in my 25 years in public safety and animal control, I have to say this is probably the hardest working and most dedicated staff I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, part of the uh, agreement with Fort Campbell is to provide us with a uh, one full-time and one part-time officer to compensate for the extra workload. Um, I think some parts of it that are maybe misunderstood is that we're going to be sitting at, at Fort Campbell or sitting on Fort Campbell. All they are paying us for is the response to and from the call. Um, any animals that we impound, uh, those costs are also associated with the uh, three-day boarding as far as the feeding. I think there was uh, some concern about not having enough food. Uh, those costs are all uh, worked into the three-day boarding costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Butts. Commissioner Vallejos. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Well, I also, I asked these concerns before, way before these emails started coming out, and there was a lot of concerns I, that I had addressed is, are we overstepping our bounds into federal, into federal property? Are we, are we over, are we, are we biting more than, uh, more than we can take on? Are we taking a bigger challenge, you know? Um, got it, of course, got that email today, um, and so uh, from, uh, from Amy here, and so, uh, and I think that email was probably talking about the whole operation team that was on there. Of course, we're not gonna be taking the, to, uh, the same piece that they have, but I still have a lot of concerns out there. I don't know, I don't know if it'd be wise, I don't know, Mayor, if we would lose the contract if we tabled this until we looked at it maybe a, another month or so, because I, I mean, it's social media is all over it. Uh, they quoted you as saying that you were in opposition on social media, and I don't know where that came from. Uh, all of us, I think all of us got that email, and so I, so I think uh, you as the director, maybe we need to take a step back, um, look at it, make an assessment. Um, and I think what we're all, I think the intent, the intent is right, because I mean, half of the animals that are already being dropped around here, a lot of them are attributed to soldiers that are are deploying or PCSing or ETS, whatever the case may be. So I don't know if it'd be wise, Mayor, for us to take a step back, and I think it's a good idea, I think, because once again, who, the, who's the big piece of this that's leaving the animals, the strays, and, and maybe just dropping off at your door? And so I don't know, it'd be, it, uh, what, what's your thought on that, if we took a step back and maybe, uh, maybe made an assessment over a month 
-hmm. and table this until then, and then come back um, after some, you know, some some talk. With, let the let the animal board uh, because I, my understanding is Commissioner Butts wasn't there, or neither was Johnson when this was introduced. So maybe we could have them uh, be a part of the conversation. I, you know, I will cater to whatever the commissioners uh, choose to do. Um, I know this was brought to Montgomery County prior to my arrival. Um, they brought it back again after my arrival. And, um, you know, we were asked by Fort Campbell to provide what the cost would be to provide that service on their base. So um, it's bringing it before the commission. and if. You know, however you decide, I will. Well, and this is no swipe at you because I think if we don't, we you know we get condemned if we don't do nothing, we get condemned if we overstep. So, you know, I but I think this is the time when you take a step back, uh, let the two commissioners that weren't there when this was deci deci decision was made, and then make an assessment. Uh, maybe uh, you know maybe on-site visits. Let some of the board members go out there and see what's going on. Maybe you know because I, I, it's needed. There's not even a question that's needed because. It's, it's a continuous problem. You know, if we take it on, uh, are we taking, are we, or do we got enough pe personnel? Um, if we're gonna take it on, maybe we need to add more personnel. So that's my concern. So I, I, think, I think maybe this may be pre, uh, premature, maybe, but it's the right, the step in the right direction. So um, I, I plan to ask for a table, uh, to table this next week. I do have one question. Is there any specific information that, uh, you would be looking for in that. I'm, I'm just curious if there's anything I haven't already provided that you'd be specifically looking for that we could provide. Huh? Well, what delay it? I was just wondering if there was any other specific information that, um, if it was tabled, that you would like us to. Well, and, I, and I misspoke tabling. I mean, this may be delaying it for oh. about four months. Okay. Right. Commissioner Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I've taken a little different approach. I've received 18 emails, uh, many of which were quite detailed and informative. But partner, Fort Knox has done this and it's not doing well. Fort Benning has done this and it's not doing well because the city of Fort Campbell has soldiers on it. The director and assistant director of that animal control pieces in the audience. One of the special things that Fort Campbell team does is a dog collar is identified, registered on post with a chip. Mm -hmm. A soldier left the animal with a friend and got loose and they have it. The soldier doesn't return from deployment for over three months and they're taking care of the animal. Our system would kill the animal. Our system today would kill the animal because we don't have something in place or prepared for for soldiers deployed. It's city of Fort Campbell that has soldiers on it. So I strongly feel that we need to, not one month or two, we need to take it a serious uh, delay so that you can prepare for something that's different, that we're not accustomed to, and make sure that we enter into this with all eyes open and, and no guessing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Sokol. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, sir, for being here. I appreciate the job that you're doing. The first question of two is how did we get into this? What happened? Uh, we were approached by Fort Campbell. Who? Uh, I, I'd probably be best for me to answer that, uh, Mr. Kasky. We were approached by Fort Campbell probably two years ago uh, to look at different aspects of non-military functions that occur on Fort Campbell. I think the Army as a whole is looking to uh, try to privatize certain things or maybe get communities to take over certain things. Uh, it started really with sim something simple as road salt. Uh, the Fort Campbell wanted to purchase road salt from Montgomery County, and uh, we actually passed a resolution authorizing that, and then we had to go to the legislature to get some legislation change to allow them to do that. Uh, there's been conversations about taking over the library, uh, and animal control came up, and our, our previous director 
uh, was working on it. Uh, when she left, we didn't like throw it in Mr. Caskey's lap right when he got here. We gave him a little time to get his feet on the ground and to learn a little bit about his department. And I don't know how many meetings you've had with Fort Campbell or conversations you've had with Fort Campbell since then, but I know they've been numerous. So he didn't go out and solicit it. I would say it was probably a joint effort between uh, my administration and Fort Campbell of just trying to partner together any way that we possibly could. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for that information. Uh, one of the things that concerns me is, <clears throat> well, first, a little bit of history. Uh, Commissioner Jennison and I served out there in a law enforcement capacity at the Provost Marshal's office for years. I understand the problems out there, and I also understand the mechanisms that we employed to get this thing under control, and I don't think it ever has been. There's too many wild animals living out in the back area to be able to effectively get rid of any of this. But uh, it concerns me when it says that Montgomery County shall transport all live captured animals to the Montgomery County Animal Control Facility or the stray animal impound facility. Now, how many animals do you take in on a daily basis? Just a ballpark figure. Ballpark figure, to find out dogs, cats, 10 to 15 between dogs and cats. I can't. Can between you? 10 to 15 between dogs and cats total. Okay, what, what is the capacity of your facility? How uh, many cages? 40, I'm sorry. How many cages do you have? What's uh, your 47 capacity? for dogs and 87 for cats. So you're taking in how many a day? Uh, 10 to 15. 10 of, so half of that population comes in on a daily basis. Yeah, that's correct. But we also have anywhere from 15 to 20 going out a week to different rescues. That's not including adoptions. Okay. So we're going to be adding to that. Correct. And how many animals is that? Uh, from the figures I've been given to by uh, Fort Campbell is about uh, 300 a year. Which breaks down to how many a day? 10? No, probably two to five a day. How many? Two to five a day, depending on, I, I can't predict the future, so I don't know how many more we take in in the future. It could be less, it could be more. Well, I think that somebody pulled the hood over you because it's gonna be more than two to five a day. I can tell you that right now. All I can do is base it off of what I've been provided by Fort yeah. Campbell. Well, I think uh, Commissioner Vallejos is correct. I'd like <clears> to see <throat> this postponed until we get further information on how this is going to work. I get hinky when we end up getting in a contract with the federal government, and they're the ones that are going to be, let's say, altering the decisions later on, which may end up sticking Montgomery County for a lot of the cost. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Sobel. Commissioner Genus. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I guess I'll also have to say uh, I'm concerned with this. Uh, I know that you've come in and on board. All the emails I have received, all the work we've seen you do has been really great. And, and we're starting to get a hold of an issue that is a no-win situation. All the years here and, of course, law enforcement, uh, you cannot win with animal control. Uh, adoption to, to, to putting them to sleep. My concern is, is are you going to take over the facility on uh, Fort Campbell? Or we've been, does that be relinquished to them? Uh, they have, are providing us the use of the facility. So electricity, usage, all that stuff, they're not going to back charge you for? No. Okay. No, so we have, we, all we have is use of the building. They are paying all the utilities. Okay, because I'm concerned when it says identifiable services. When you go from four and a half to one and a half, and uh, uh, this current contract they have there now is meeting the needs of doing a lot of good things, uh, I, I just see this as a time bomb wrapped in a, in a, in a nice Christmas package that is a no-win. I also checked with Fort Knox. Of course, management on the military side thought, hey, this is a great deal. I've washed my hands of it. Mm -hmm. Citizens and uh, folks that are, you know, animal lovers in that world it's the worst thing that ever happened. Because of that dichotomy that exists, I submit that 
we may be taking on too much, and I'm going to go with uh, Commissioner Vallejos, uh, the Animal Control Committee, the folks here, they really need to do some looking under the covers to see what kind of awesome responsibility you're taking over from really the city of Fort Campbell. A lot of citizens out there, and it ebbs and flows on their care for animals. I think some more research need to be done, and I'll leave that with fellow commissioners to consider that as you look at this down the road. That's enough. Thank you, Commissioner Genius. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. I, I appreciate you coming before us and appreciate your work that you've been doing. We set in place, I, I equate it to building a house. We've laid a foundation with some of the plans we've made in the last month or two. I would prefer before us starting to build on that, we let the foundation dry. I, I mean, we put the concrete down, it's still wet. Let's wait, let's let that foundation dry. Let's go forward with what we're trying to do. The objective of our animal control is to reduce euthanasia, right? How many that, Correct. I mean, that's the goal. And Absolutely. I believe that you can do that. But I believe it will be very difficult for you to do that if we add this on top of it. So I'd be in favor of, of postponing definitely. But I appreciate everything you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kasky, I appreciate what you do. You, you do a great job, uh, you do. Uh, my question would be, where's the rest? This appears to be a minimal offering at best. It, it appears that it is just enough to allow you to tread water to, to maintain the status quo with what they have. Mm -hmm. And that shows absolutely nothing for the increase in population that we have or any of the changes that may happen with the change with the new procedures we just put in last month because you and I know that we're on opposite ends of that uh, you think it's gonna fix it I think it's gonna <laughs> be a problem over here we'll see how that plays out right but it just doesn't seem to be enough and you know I've got two bottles of water here mm -hmm. and no matter how bad I want it to be six it's not gonna happen I appreciate the faith you have in your staff I appreciate the enthusiasm that you have and that your staff has. But if, if you are struggling to maintain, you know, and, and that's kind of what was said last time, was that you can't really base your day when you've got 15 to 20 people outside your door dropping off animals. Mm -hmm. Well, it, if you're full and if you're euthanizing animals and you've got people flooding in the door all the time and you're you're stretching your, your staff and everybody's working at full speed just to manage. I just don't see how you can take on a completely other area and you're only adding one full-time and one part-time. That's just not enough. And I mean, if you look at the budget that the federal government has and the, the budget that the military has and the budget that the Army has and the budget that Fort Campbell has, and then you look at what we have left after we give a huge chunk of our money to the school system, I just don't see it being financially responsible to the people of Montgomery County to take this on with the minimum amount that they're offering. If we were gonna take on something of this size, if we were gonna take on this big bite here, there should be enough of an additional funds coming in to renovate your entire building down there. there. I mean, there should be some monumental changes before we take on a monumental job. Uh, I mean, I never said I was right about anything, but I kind of think I'm on the right page on this one. So thank you. Commissioner Butts, I'm going to let M Commissioner Hodges speak. He hadn't spoke yet to this matter. Yes, sir. Then I'll come back to you. Sure, so I agree with, with what Commissioner Johnson's saying. And, and just out of curiosity, what percentage of, of the animals are euthanized on Fort Campbell? Do you know? Uh, I think the figure, and the figures they sent me was uh, almost 4%. So 4% of the animals they take in. What about, what about us? What about Montgomery County? Uh, right now, our save rate is at 86%, which has uh, increased uh, over the last three months from. So we're euthanizing about 14%? Correct. 
So, so we're going to be euthanizing a lot more animals potentially too, because we're 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 not going to keep that four percent rate. I don't think that's a fair statement. You're taking in a whole lot more animals in Montgomery County than you are than Fort Campbell's taking in. Those percentage comparisons are not the same. But what makes us think that we're going to do a better job adopting the Fort Campbell animals out than we are do adopting our Montgomery County animals out? I, I, I didn't say that we were going to do that. I said I don't think your percentages are fair. In, in what sense? One fourteen percent, one four percent. In the volume of animals that are taken in versus the number of animals that are actually euthanized. Sure, so, but but what I'm saying is, if if Fort Campbell is only euthanizing four percent of their animals because they're adopting the rest out, is it not safe to assume that their numbers are going to be more in line with ours if we're bringing them in? We're not reducing the amount of number, the amount of animals we're bringing in from from Montgomery County, are we? We we've reduced our euthanasia rate. What about 25 percent in the last what? Uh, probably over the last four months, we've dropped from uh, it was around 73 percent, and now we're up to 86 percent safe rate, which is um, great, but it's still not four percent. And the number of animals Fort Campbell takes in is roughly seven and a half percent of what we take in, so it's a very small percentage yeah. of what. No, and I, I completely get that, but but we're not going to be taking any less. It's not like animals. We're going to take any less animals from Montgomery County in. Right. So statistically, we still have to base it on the animals that we're we're adopting out and we're euthanizing, not not on the amount of animals that Fort Campbell's adopting out and euthanizing. We're just adding this to our current service. So, yeah, I just I just think that, you know, animal control has been. I've had more emails about animal control than than any other department or or issue i mean i had more uh, uh, emails on animal control than we had on raising taxes uh <laughs> so so people take it pretty serious and and you know their their euthanization rates pretty low and and i just don't know how we can mimic that service with with 150,000 is that what we're getting 150,000 dollars from fort campbell to take on 154,000 yeah. yeah to take on on their animal control that's that, that's a heck of a deal for fort campbell but that's that's all I got. Thank you, Commissioner Butts. Yeah, uh, this might be for you, Mayor. Or I just I'm I had to step out and use the restroom, and you might have already answered this question. But if we were to table this or defer it, how long do we have before that deal with Fort Campbell is over? I mean, if we done this a year from now, do, do we not know or? I, I couldn't answer that question. Yeah, I, is there no way of knowing it? I would have to check with Fort Campbell. I don't know the answer to that question right now. If, if you do, could you? We'll try to get that answer yes, provided sir. to the commission. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Any questions regarding 18.83? Mr. Kasky, thank you. Resolution 1884 is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of state grant grant funds from the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. Uh, this is similar to the other grants that I spoke of earlier. There's no matching funds. Any questions on 1884? Resolution 1885, resolution approving an economic impact plan on behalf of Clarksville Hotel and Conference Center plan area. I think we have some folks that want to address this one. Yes, sir. If we could, do I need to do that? Can you turn it on? Okay. So I have some slides I'd like to talk to you. What we are here to talk to you about tonight, uh, the Economic Development Council, through its agencies of the Industrial Development Board and the Convention Visitors Bureau, are working with a private developer to create uh, an asset we think is greatly needed in Clarksville, and that is a conference center and hotel. Uh, and it'd be located around the exit four area. And if you look at the slide, uh, see how this technology is working for me. This blue, blue area right here, site number 13, is a 37 acre track of land. And uh, approximately 20 acres of that 37 uh, acre track would be developed to be the pad ready site for this venture. And what we're here to talk to you all about tonight is an economic impact plan that would create a tax increment finance revenue stream 
that would help us fund the incentives that we need to offer this private developer to generate uh, their investment of some $30 million to build this facility. We uh, have budgeted an amount of up to $4.5 million. The Industrial Development Board has authorized its executive director to send out an RFP and negotiate a, uh, a loan agreement for up to that amount of money. But we don't want to do that unless we have developed a revenue stream that would help us fund that. So we have presented this TIF agreement or economic impact plan to the Industrial Development Board and they have uh, anonim uh, unanimously approved the plan. We have taken it to the City Council and they uh, unanimously approved uh, that plan. So now we're here at the county government. It takes all three agencies to approve uh, the plan before it can go into place. So, so that, that is basically uh, what we're looking to do. And if I can go to the next slide. All right. Um, so what, what this does is shows how and where this is located. This is the exit four area. This is Highway 79, or as we all call it, Wilma Rudolph. And this area right here, showing this gray line area, is the new um, northeast corridor connector, excuse me, the northeast connector route that the city government has put into their budget for FY19 to allow design and construction of this area, this loop, uh, which is phase one. And this construction of this phase one times uh, perfectly with our plan for moving forward with this uh, hotel convention center. If, if we get this plan approved uh, by the county uh, next Monday, this will give us the potential revenue stream we need to where we can incur the debt, could start earthwork this fall to do the preparation of the 20 acre site, and then um, we have spotted an additional uh, roughly 12 acre track right here that would give us the ability to bring in a construction entrance and a back road entrance. We would construct that road there and put sidewalks in to allow the connectability to not only um, this area with another traffic light exit here, but all these hotels that are located in this general area. If you look at the numbers, as we've explained in some of our one-on-one -on -one meeting, the hotel would be a 175 to 200 room hotel. Uh, the conference center, which is 40 to 50,000 square foot, could accommodate up to 1,500 people. That area would accommodate a set down meal event that would help hold 1,000 participants sitting having that meal. That's probably double the size of any facility we have in Clarksville, Montgomery County at this time. So, so all of those things would be in place. So we would do the site work this fall, um, and then that would allow us to be lined up to where next summer, July, uh, is the time frame that the developer plans to have his construction start. And that would allow him 16 to 17 months 17 to 18 months to construct, which would put us right at the end of 2020, which is exactly when that loop road is, is uh, targeted to be constructed and in place. So um, that's kind of what we have on the board uh, to do. Uh, the four and a half, the, we, we figure we can do all of that, buy this land, put the road in, extend utilities, do the site earthwork, and live within that four and a half million dollar budget. So that's just an overview of the project. Uh, again, it's anticipated it would be a $30 million investment. Uh, during that construction period, it would generate between 100 and 200 construction jobs. Uh, when the hotel is up and running, uh, they project that they will have uh, 50 uh, employees working there. Within the 24 months of starting up, they would hit that 50 up number, and they would generate about $1.3 million payroll annually. It's also expected that this would generate some $400 plus thousand dollars in real property taxes. 
annually. It is projected that it would generate uh, additional $162,500 in annual local sales tax and also about $360,000 a year to the hotel motel taxes in the city and the county from this business. Um, so I've gone through the timeline, showed you the layout. Let's see if I got one more slide here. So that what is the TIF plan or the economic impact plan? It is this area that's generated in blue uh, on, on the map here. And again, uh, this is your Wilma Rudolph Boulevard. Wait a minute, my mouse is not working. So this is Wilma Rudolph Boulevard. This is your exit four. Uh, so this is the traffic light right here where if you turn in, I, I'm sorry, I can't read the road names right now. Uh, this would be where the Chick-fil-A and the Chipotle's restaurant is. Uh, there's hotels, restaurants, service stations. There's a Walmart in this general area right here. This is the area where your shopping center is that has Coles and Red Lobster. This is the Starbucks, um, Buffalo Wild Wings, Academy Sports all of that area. This blank area represents a residential apartment, so it's not included. And then basically from this point on is undeveloped land. And we project that um, the road, the Northeast Connector Road will eventually be the, the uh, starting from this point that will take you all the way over to um, Old Trenton Highway. And that would give us a corridor helping to alleviate some of our congestion on uh, Wilma Rudolph at this time and for the future. And that's the main reason the city is planning to build that road is, is for helping with traffic flows. So that is the concept. What, what you all have in front of you or will have in front of you is the resolution that's been provided. Uh, we have our legal counsel here, Mr. Tom Trent from Bradney Arant. What I did not mention and should have, um, the land, the 37 acre track of land is a parcel of land that is owned by the Batson East Land Company. And, and that is a local family here in Clarksville, the Batson family, which happens to be, uh, Mr. Richard Batson is the Industrial Development Board's attorney of record. And therefore, Mr. Batson is not advising or doing any legal work pertaining to this transaction just to eliminate the potential conflict of interest rules and laws. So we have hired the law firm Bradney, Bradney or Bradney Arant? What? Bradney Arant uh, law firm. So that's the presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions and we also have legal counsel here to address any questions you might have. Commissioner Gannon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we had a budget meeting prior to this meeting, yes. uh, and the budget, what came out of there was, obviously it's a very good project and we can see the benefit of it. However, we're very concerned, and I speak for all the budget members, uh, that there are no timelines with inside the contract that we have there. No estimated date of completion, no estimated time of start. We would like to see some of that added. We will have a difficult time going forward if some of that's is not in there a little bit. It, it seems like it's very open-ended and could go on forever, so it, it doesn't give any kind of timeline within there. And well, we would like I, to see that added. We would uh, develop that timeline once we complete uh, the MOU agreement with the actual developer. That agreement is in discussion at this point in time, so I've given you the general timeline, the plan we have. Uh, but it will be nailed down in future agreements. We have agreed that all future agreements will be shared uh, with the, both mayors of the governments for their review or whatever committee they want to take them to or whatever. Uh, so it, it, we felt we needed to be able to have this economic impact plan approved to show that we have the revenue stream to go forward with the four and a half, do, four and a half million commitment we've got of infrastructure that we have to do. Once we've got that and we have that approval, then we have the tools we need to set down seriously and finish the negotiation with the MOU for the land, uh, the 37 acres, and secondly, the MOU with the developer. That, that's our plan. Question? Project. Yeah, the project agreement, I'm sorry. Okay. And that will set forth the terms. Yeah, and it will, he's, he's agreeing that the pro, that, that 
project agreement will set forth a timeline. Okay, we'd like to see some of that timeline. You will see that when, as it's yep. developed. Yep. And my second question is for Mr. Trent. Last time you were working on a TIF, I think you were representing the city and, and was against the TIF that we had downtown, which you were saying that that wasn't legal uh, and represented the city from that. You Now you're representing the city again, I guess, or the IDB on a TIF. Can you tell me why this TIF is, you're in favor of this one, however, you were three years ago, you were opposed to the TIF that we did. Yeah, let me be clear, I wasn't opposed to the TIF. I was opposed to the process. The statute uh, requires that every plan, every economic impact plan identify a project, the amount of taxes to be generated by the project, and the uh, benefits of the project. That plan didn't identify all the projects that were being incentivized in the plan area, which our firm doesn't think meets the requirements of the statute. This one does. The only project being incentivized is the hotel and conference center and the road to connect it across to Fair Fairbrook. Fairbrook. And so that's perfectly legal. Um, and again, even on that one, uh, once the city council decided they wanted to support it, we said, you know, will abide by their decision, but I was asked to give our opinion, and we did. Um, you may recall the Kroger uh, project that was, I represented Kroger on, uh, similarly identified the Kroger Marketplace store, which eventually did not go forward. Same type of plan, that was fine. It identified the project, the benefits, the estimated tax. So I'm quite comfortable. I've done many, many TIF projects. Uh, my only problem was the fact that the downtown plan was going to fund other projects that weren't identified without coming back to you or to the city council. So the potential multiple projects. Correct. Right. Commissioner Sokol. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for being here, Mr. Evans. <clears throat> the discussion we had when we met in your office the big concern I had was traffic. And you left out one partner in this deal that you have not discussed, and that's TDOT. Uh, first of all, how far does the connector go for the first part of this project? Okay, phase, phase one of the new northeast uh, connector is this loop road right here coming off of Wilma Rudolph and then it will go back here and then it will loop back around and connect to Wilma Rudolph. That is phase one. And those roads are, oh gosh, north, north, north Edgewood Road and then the southern one where the Starbucks is, is. Uh, Southampton. Yep, Southampton Road. So that loop would be phase one. And, and according to the, the mayor's budget or the city's budget, they not only have the design cost, they have construction cost in for that phase one to start FY19. So that is phase one. It's fair to say that until phase two is completed and connects it all the way over to Old Trenton Road, uh, there's not gonna be much relief off of Wilma Rudolph until that road is completed. Um, They've done the environmental work for that, but they have not yet passed a budget that would give them construction dollars. Uh, and I'm not sure about design. They may have the design, I'm not sure. There is one obstacle in the whole deal that um, I think it's fair to say there are discussions with the local government that's involved uh, with TDOT to try to assist to get some of the federal dollars that come through Tennessee Department of Transportation that would allow funds that would help defer the cost of the bridge that has to go over Spring Creek. But those are conversations, there's no agreements, there's no commitments or anything at this point that I'm aware of. Well, yeah, and it just keeps getting worse. I mean, the city's gonna commit themselves this year for whatever amount of money it's gonna take to do the horseshoe, basically. 
And then we're going to depend in some future endeavor that the federal government, TDOT, and the city are going to cooperate within the next four years and complete the corridor. Is that my understanding? What was your what was your what was your number of years? Four. I didn't four I didn't get, I, I didn't give a year because I don't have the year. I don't know how many years it's going to take. I can't I can't make that commitment. I don't even think. My personal opinion is the city mayor cannot make that because she has to prepare a budget and get a budget approved. And until those budgets are approved, there's no 100% commitment. That's my opinion. Okay, so then we have the horseshoe with a maybe for the rest of it to go down to Trenton. And then on Trenton, I don't see where TDOT's gonna be able to expand that part to Kennedy Road to the uh, interstate. You have a school on one side, you have residents on the other side, there's not that much space at all. So how are they gonna get uh, one, two, three, four, six lanes in there, or five lanes? Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I'm and not a road engineer, I can't, I can't answer that. that? I, I can't even try to answer that because I'm not a road engineer, but I do know that there is a TDOT plan looking at how they would do that. There are efforts uh, being okay. So when is that going to be completed, sir? I wish I had that answer, but my crystal ball. Well, I, I don't know. There's no hard commitments. I just know that the process is in work for that work to be stepped up and done. Well, the overall thing that I have about this is that with these number of uncommitted issues, we have. The corridor, we have city council, we have federal dollars, you have TDOT, you have road construction going through this area up until Trenton, which means different projects, different costs. And I think with the number of commissioners leaving this session, that it will be best if we lift this decision with the new commissioners coming in because they're going to have to deal with these issues after we leave. And, and what issue is, is that that they are leaving to be dealt with that they don't have now, Mr. Soko? Well, we have the traffic issue. We have uh, uh, how, how many years have we, we had this traffic? commitment here on a pilot, TIF, whichever one you want to describe it, and a road that may go to nowhere. Mm -hmm. And then we still have a problem with traffic on Wormer Rudolph Boulevard. Well, which was, it, was look, the look, main concern I had. Looking at the glass half full, we would have the road that gives us the connection and the loop, and we would have a hotel conference center, and that's two things we don't have now. That's progress. And the, and the future is for that road to be extended to Trenton Road. Now, whether that takes two, four, six, or eight years, I guess, you know, there's a lot of questions to be answered on that. but. It is, it is a desire and a commitment by the city government to move that northeast connector road project forward. And, and again, I just have to, we, we have to have some faith that what we're gonna do is the right thing to do. Yeah, this city council, which may also change. That's correct. So we're not sure about that either. But I think, well, never mind. I'll well, that's, a, I'll that's my up. opinion because when I first came on a commission, we were faced with a lot of issues that were basically hoisted on us from the previous commission, and we had to deal with it. And I don't think it's fair for us to do the same thing to the incoming. And this is an issue that I think should be discussed with those folks because they're going to have to deal with any ramifications, failures, additional costs, contracts, whatever you may want to call it. And that's just my opinion. Thank you. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mike, for being here. Appreciate it very much. I think, uh, kind of echoing what Commissioner Sokol said, I see uh, like basically three variables, uh, plain and simple. I see at Wilma Rudolph, I see an intersection at the uh, Chick-fil-A that that's in bad shape as it is now needs a lot of work and you 
you've told us that the other intersection, we don't know if we'd be able to put a traffic light there or not to solve the problem. And there's probably not enough room at that Chick-fil-A location or that, that intersection to expand it. So that's the intersection on Wilmer Rudolph. Then we go down to the other end and we've got a bridge that we don't know will happen. And we also have an intersection that we don't know will happen. That's three variables in the situation. Those all three kind of, I could probably accept one variable, maybe two, but three of those that have to happen, well, that's, that seems like a lot. I'm but the variable in my, to have the hotel and the conference center open and running and being successful, the, the continuation of the Northeast Connector, the Northeast Connector Road project is for the future of relieving traffic. We, that doesn't have to happen for the hotel conference center to be built and to be successful. So take that, take that op, I mean, take that variable out because that's not necessary for the hotel conference center to be successful. I would probably disagree with you there, Mike. What I would tell you is that area, uh, if it's not a requirement, it's pretty darn close to a requirement out there. To, it, to it's have a congested that. road, and I will agree with you on that. But it's a congested road. Uh, it's not congested comparing to going to our neighbor Davidson County. Uh, apples and apples. <laughs> I, you know, I would really like to have more substantial dates of completion like uh, Commissioner Gannon's. Well, one way of looking at it, putting the hotel conference center out there might put more pressure on making it happen. Is the glass half full or half empty? That's what we're looking at. I mean, we could we could probably go around the circle for all night, and I'm you know we're friends, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Albert. I want to make sure I'm at the right end, uh, Commissioner Harper. Is it the Chick Fil A or is it down at the Dairy Queen? But will the main intersection for traffic in and going at the Chick-fil-A or at the Dairy Queen? Well, no, I think it'd be at the Starbucks. I don't think you got either one of them right. <laughs> so, so uh, well, if you go by the name of the road, the North, Southampton, the, the North Edgewood Road, okay, which is going to be the primary, uh, what is that, uh, north to south connection of the connector road. They are planning, it is planned, to put a traffic light at that intersection. Okay. For those of you all for familiarity, that is the intersection. There is a um, Ebenezer's package store. And Dairy Queen. And Dairy Queen at that intersection. There is not a traffic light there at this time, okay? That is in the plans for the new road and that main corridor. And then Phase two carries it over to Old Trenton Road. Phase three would come back and cross Wilma Rudolph and carry it to Ted Crozier. That's the long-term plan for that connector road. It's not going to be built in, in three years, no. Good question. Commissioner Vallejos. Good God almighty. Thank you, man. <laughs> I think what needs to happen is, once again, this probably needs to be delayed. For several, for several points. All the variables you mentioned, but also maybe so we could get time to get a timeline uh, before we commit the tax dollars, which is, and I, I tell you what, I, this, this is long overdue, long overdue. But I think uh, if we rush into it, there's so many things were, that were mentioned and the back and forth. I think, number one, this, this city is tired of the backed up traffic. And I think if we, don't, if we don't get some answers, concrete answers from TDOT, get some answers from timeline from uh, the corporation that's going to build this hotel, then I think we ought to delay this until, you know, we get some answers because then we, we push this forward and the city council unanimously voted for it. And then 
So then we do, and then, then, then what we got is, it, because it's not on you, it's not your responsibility to get TDOT, it's your responsibility, you're doing your job, and your due diligence to get us a uh, convention center with uh, private, private money, which is, I applaud you, but you can't control TDOT, and yeah, TDOT could come, and, and they could, it could pressure them. What, what will it take, 10 years to pressure them? <laughs> so, and then you put, so there's just too many, there's too many uncertainties, so I think, it would be good, and if we got if we delayed this uh, to the next one, and then it gives the new commission an eyes view of what's going on because uh, I, I just think it's wise. It's, uh, it's incumbent upon us to do wise things, and if this is one of the wise things we do, my recommendation is that next week we, as a commission, delay this for a month, study it because I, we all want it. The city wants this, but w let's get some answers first, and not guess about the answers because it's not on you to. It's not on you. You can't predict when the roads are going to come. You, you just can't. I, the city is going to do what they can, but there's too many unknowns here. And that's, I just think we need to get timelines from uh, the corporation itself. Uh, when are you willing to commit your, your dollars when we commit our dollars? So that's just my take. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Vallejos. Mike, I, I have a question or maybe a couple of questions. And I think you said this, but the first phase of the road projects, that's 100% funded design and construction by the city, correct? That is what I was told by the mayor, yes. Okay. My, my, my second question, and, and Mr. Trent, you may ha help me with this one. And, and again, I, we have traded a whole lot of emails, and I've told y'all and every one of them, I've started, hey, I'm in favor of this project. And I've really tried to protect I want to make sure that Montgomery County from, from a financial standpoint is protected, and I'm satisfied that we are. My, my question would be, though, if phase two is not built from, let's just say, the convention site over to Trenton Road, is there enough increment there, because you're not going to get that growth out there, is there enough, enough increment there to, to finance what you need financed, the 4.5? Uh, and I know that's a hard question to yeah. answer. Well, uh, increment is based on predictions. Right. So there's, you have to you know, understand that. But there's, there's two ways this loan will be paid back. One is with the incremental increase in property tax, as a res well, three ways, as a result of this site being developed. Number two is the adjacent property in the plan area eventually being developed. And the third is the 11.55 acre track, which is on that previous slide, right. where the road is coming through, will then be sold off for uh, probably another hotel or restaurant development Potential. or both. And that, those proceeds will go against the loan. If uh, I just did some basic numbers, uh, if, the, if, if they ended up getting a million dollars for those, that land, which is, seems to be quite low. Uh, once it's the uh, back entrance into the convention center, your loan's down to three and a half million at that point. Um, it would take uh, just the increment from only the convention center and hotel is anticipated to pay that off in less than 20 years. So it would ser that would service the debt? Just day. that. Okay. And that's at a 5% interest rate. Okay. Now, Thank you. If, if you got more, it'd pay got, it off quicker. It'd be off much quicker. And as the other property in the plan area appreciates or develops, the anticipation is that this will probably be paid off quite quickly. Okay. Thank uh, you. Let me, let me point out, just in addition to what Mr. Trent said, by putting in just phase one, this loop right here, you're opening up all of this property that's color coded around here, other than number 13. Right. And that's going to be rezoned. And that's going to create new investments along there. Very, I project very rapidly. Okay. Commissioner White. Yes, I have a question. The uh, lower arm of this horseshoe is that where Red Lobster is? Yes. Red Lobster. Okay, there is a light right there. You between Starbucks there and Red is, Lobster. There is a light right here. This is so, the south So the traffic light that they're having a problem with, or my colleagues are having a problem with. 
Well, this, it's this, up at Ebenezer's, right? You know, where you go in up there. That's correct. That's so where there is not one currently, but there is plans for one yeah. with the new connector road. So then correct. they could actually exit at the Red Lobster, which is a you know a very large intersection. Uh, I just don't see any reason to put this off. I think this needs to, uh, 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 I guess, uh, you know, be voted on next week. I mean, we've all seen this, and I would just respectfully say I didn't see anything wrong with this at all. And it's in the the uh, in perfect place. We might lose the land or something. I mean, there is a possibility that we could lose the land, right? I mean, if if we don't, I mean, this this land is going to be available for sale, and with this road for sure coming, this land's not going to sit there. That's a I think that's a fair assessment. And, and I mean, it's just prime land. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to get my arms around this thing, you know. Yeah, and, 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 and to have that land company willing to donate right. that and and reducing our investment cost. I yeah. don't think that opportunity will hang around a long time myself either. So then as an attorney, I know that the dates will come, okay? As soon as we get the plans, you know, you will get a contractor, and okay. then the dates will be in there. I mean, quickly, in fact, right, Council? We, we already have some drafts yeah. that we're working Mr. through. Mr. Trent would know that. Yeah. Yes, sure. we have some internal drafts. We have a draft MOU with the CVB, the Batson uh, East, East Land Company, and the city on their timing of the road. Um, we have an internal draft of a project agreement with the hotel developer. That's the part where there's going to be more work. And so and until we have that done and those dates tied down and the mayor and, and uh, council to the uh, county have signed off on it, we're not going to be uh, spending your money. Correct? And so, uh, you know, just a final observation, too. We're about to have 12 brand new members. and. Uh, you know, they're a little bit green, and uh, you know, everybody in here is veterans. I just think that uh, you know, we need to be the ones to vote this in. Maybe it'll be sort of a legacy too, but uh, I just think, you know, uh, there's a lot of learned people in here tonight and a lot of experienced people, and for, for Mr. Evans to have to go back to the drawing board, you know, and talk to uh, a bunch of brand new people, I just think is a very, very over overburdensome. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hodges, Jason. So those are both city roads, right? Yes, sir. So, so the only thing you need from us is the financing. So we don't, we don't have anything to do with those. That those is roads correct. Anyway. There's no, there's no county government investment in that road that I'm aware of. Is there, Mayor? No, none yes. that I'm aware of. So not I, in what's, been, what's not what's there currently, and there's been no conversation for uh, anything that's proposed. So that congest any kind of congestion there that falls on city government. I mean, I don't know why yeah. why we'd be involved in that. But all right, thank you, thank you. Commissioner Albert. Along those lines too, with the uh, uh, infrastructure, basically, uh, if it's up on the city, and I don't know if everybody knows, but you know the land was donated, so that's several million dollars. That in the future, if we don't pass this, at some point we'll have to buy some land somewhere if we want to move forward. So. You know, you know, it's not often you find in the, where this land is located somebody willing to give it to you. Right. It, it, Thank you. Timing is right for it to be a win-win now for the landowner to put it in the deal, encourage the road to be finished, and it's opening up all the rest of their land, and that's going to be for development, and that's going to help on the increment, which is going to help pay the debt off quicker. So I never get in front of you without at least asking you. I would encourage you to please support this. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Trent. Thank you. We, we, we actually received, I, I, I think I received it too. I hadn't looked at it. We need to update to one of the appendixes on this e economic impact plan. It had a very minor change in the name change. We will send that out to each of y'all uh, first thing in the morning. Exhibit B is what it is. Resolution 1886, resolution requesting the state of Tennessee and the Tennessee Department of Transportation to install walkway, walkway sidewalks on a portion of Trenton Road in Montgomery County, Tennessee. Commissioners, this is just uh, back in, in uh, February of 2017, uh, TDOT did a technical report and they looked at a couple of different uh, 
I don't know, I may not use exact terminology, but they looked at a, a conceptual alternative and a traffic and safety comparison. They actually showed in one of those sidewalks being stalled on that road. Commissioner Sokol mentioned it earlier. It, Trenton Road is part of the IMPROVE Act. This is more, nothing more than a request to ask TDOT to install them, and it specifically talks about in the area adjacent to the school complex. Any questions about 1886? 1887 is a resolution to provide additional funding in the amount of 75,000 to Two Rivers Corporation, a foundation according to 501c4 of the Internal Revenue Code. Commissioner Gannon. Thank you, Mayor. Having talked with the mayor over some of TRC and the downtown commons and things, we f and he, he felt that, that this was a pivotal year for TRC and I tend to agree. I'd like to go over kind of about six points real quickly with you. Um, and I'd like to see us reinstate the 75,000 to help Two Rivers Corporation get through this year. I think they've done wonderful things and I think we've got them right up to the door. I think we've got them ready to graduate and I think they need that little push and, and, and the mayor, I believe, agrees with me in there. On the simple study, TRC provides the security for the downtown commons. If we were to do that ourselves, that would cost us over $250,000. So the 75,000 would be a mere drop compared to having to, to secure it ourselves in that. And they've done a wonderful job doing that. We all know the story between the city and TRC's development and things that happened through all that time. And I really don't want to rehash that. Most of you already know it. And if you don't, you can look it up and Google it. But since the TRC has come over and we have taken them under our wing, they have grown by leaps and bounds. They have matured. They have been successful and seen things being accomplished. I think you've seen them grow up right in front of your eyes in the last three to four years. What they're doing is successful. You cannot argue that. Since July of 16, you've seen $29 million worth of property transfer hands, over 116 properties in downtown transferred alone. That is very, very successful. I have had the opportunity to go on some inner city visits over the course of the years, as well as some other county commissioners. And when you go to those inner city visits, one of the things you learn is that all the cities have some kind of downtown corporation or river district corporation. This is ours. This is the one that helps us do it. Some cities have multiple. And if you've seen what they've done on some of the city visits, you've seen terrific things. And if you haven't been, you can Google some of those and seen it. It works and they do it. In fact, the one in Chattanooga was lucky enough, they started out with $12 million in seed money from Coca-Cola. We started ours with 150,000 and they're getting ready to mature. They, they, their success rate is tremendous. They've done leaps and bounds. We've got them right to the door. We, they need a little help getting through this year. And then I think they're going to be, I think the mayor's right, I think they're going to be able to take it over from that point. They've set some of their funding. You've seen a lot of people that tend to be against it. I'm here to say that there aren't that many people. I'm here to say that they speak up a little bit louder than the rest. There's definitely more people in favor of the downtown commons and what the TRC is doing than what you think. Four years ago, I asked for a town hall meeting when we did the downtown commons. If you were around at that time and you came to that town hall meeting, you saw four to one more people that were in favor of the downtown commons and TRC and what they were doing. There are definitively more people in, front of, in, in favor of it. This is your park. We voted for this. This administration under this commission voted for that park to be installed. We are responsible for some of its success and TRC is helping us get it there. We've got them right up to the door, ready to graduate. TRC is, is there. Let's help them get over that door. Let's not cut them off and, and walk backwards in this point in time. Let's let them continue and let them get over that, that rung. Talk about the elephant in the room. And I'll have, hope Norm addresses a little bit of this afterwards. Some of the rumors out there or is that his wife is selling the real estate and he's guiding into those. I've talked to Norm and he adamant, adamantly denies that and I believe that. But I do believe that if you're a successful real estate person or successful in whatever you do, but let's say real estate person, you wanna be where the hot neighborhoods are, where the hot subdivisions are. Downtown is a hot area right now. So for a successful person, real estate person, I don't see any fault in doing that, especially since Norm didn't guide him. The other, Rumor was is that 
we're not renting the downtown commons for free. It's only for money. If you only had money, that's the only way you can rent it. Well, Norm placed a packet on your desk, three-page packet, started with the front of the budget. If you go to the back sheet, you will see that there are only four pay events, I believe four, four paid events for all of TRC in the last year. The rest of them are free events. So everybody in the community is using it. It's very successful. TRC, it's, it's our park. We need to see it successful. And I urge you to vote in favor and let's graduate TRC for this year and get them over the hump. Thank you, Commissioner Ganny. Commissioner Red. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'll just be real brief tonight because we've gone very far. Uh, those of us have, that have voted against giving county taxpayers dollars to the TRC, which in essence is given money to property owners that own property downtown, that doesn't mean we're against the TRC. The TRC was set up by the city and, it's, uh, and the Tennessee code annotated. And the way it is supposed to work, for those people that do not know that, the property owners are supposed to be funding like a homeowners association putting in their dollars by and, and their properties are assessed and they put in money. They, it's not supposed to be funded by the government. I, I, I just don't know what happened to that. This was what the, some of the commissioners, I believe last time said, oh, this is the last time. I'm going to do it this time. We're going to we're going to fund you one more time. But let me tell you, this is the last time. And some of the commissioners said, yes, they're in the county office, and I'm going to do it this time. And then they got to leave the county office. But it, it seems like it is a, a churning vote that comes up every other month. The city has a, 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 a rule within their procedures. If something happens to fail, it can't be brought up again for a year and I wish that we had something similar, but I'll have more to say about this next Monday. And um, I'm just surprised at this and this talk of we need to postpone this, we need to postpone that, we need to postpone things until um, until I'm out of office is basically what I'm hearing. But thank you, Mayor, for your time. Thank you, Commissioner Red. Commissioner Nichols. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm the commissioner that made the motion to remove the money from the original budget. Listening to John Gannon and his explanation, I think it's prudent for this uh, commissioner when it comes up for vote uh, next Monday to support this, to get him through this year. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just briefly, <clears throat> excuse me, I was one that seconded uh, Commissioner Nichols' motion, and I voted last time to take away the funding. Uh, I've seen nothing tonight that makes me change that opinion. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. Co Commissioner Gannon? I would like to ask Commissioner Jason Hodges, who's on the TRC board and was instrumental in downtown Commons, what he thinks of this, if he would like to give an opinion. If Commissioner Hodges is willing to address your question, I, that's totally up to him. Okay. He can put, yeah, you can't have a give and take back and forth, although I, that seems to occur on occasion. And, <laughs> but, if, but if Commissioner Hodges pushes that little button, he can speak. If he has to be recognized. And speaking real quick, I'll, I'll just say I'm opposed to it. I, I think that the TRC's gotten enough money. Um, they get a money from, from an event center, that a plaza that we built every time they do an event there. They, they keep all those proceeds. That's what they should be using to pay for the stuff that you see in this little packet that you get. Uh, Norm can address, how much did you guys make last concert? Was it $50,000? What was it? 
$1,200 you made? Okay, well, why, why don't you bring those numbers, numbers to us on, on what all, what all the, the plazas made, the events you've had, and the money it's, it's made, and all the, the advertising profits that the, the plazas made as well. And let's look at that, and, and that's where that money should be going. That's what should be paying for this, not, not money from us every year to pay for this. So that's my opinion on it. Thanks. Well, I, I, Commissioner Cannon mentioned my name. I, I'll just chime in, and uh, I, I told the commission the story of the uh, the process when we went through the budget committee uh, that I made the motion to cut them uh, to cut them to seventy five thousand, and I, I don't believe we should continue to fund them. Uh, but I do agree with what Commissioner Gannon says. If if you look at the information they provided us, uh, you you're looking at at one event, Spirit Fest, that happened when the park was partially open. The park, we hadn't even had a ribbon cutting for the park. And then you look at the next event is uh, April, 4, April, of 8, April 18th of, of this year. And so they've had less than four months prior to our budget cycle to do anything to raise any money. And that's my whole point. So. Since Commissioner Gannon mentioned my name, uh, <laughs> I told you how I felt. Anybody else? Resolution 188 is a resolution to amend the budgets of various funds for fiscal year 2019 in certain areas of revenues and expenditures. Commissioner Gannon. To back up for one second, I'd like to see if Norm Crea would like to say anything on TRC, if we could, or I yield my time to him. I, I don't have a problem with that if that's what y'all want to do. Do you want to ask him a specific question? I think he's got something he wants to say. Sure. Um, I'd just like to say the, you know, TRC, uh, growing TRC, and, you know, we've created some avenues to r raise funding for TRC. We have a partner in progress, and yes, the making money off events at the downtown commons but we got to get there uh, we had to raise money to have some of the events that we had there uh, we started off with nothing so that money was raised to have the downtown at sundown and some of these other events there so um, we've we started off with nothing we have some events going but we have to build this park up and to be able to create some revenue stream um, the money raised was put right back in it uh, that's how the at first the uh, security and the custodial staff was paid for uh, because the importance of keeping um, that park clean and safe. Uh, these events um, take money uh, to put them on. Uh, there's uh, maintenance in this park and supplies and um, and I, I would like to say that through the TRC marketing committee that it takes people to put these events on. So I can't tell you the amount of numerous volunteers and through that committee that has helped um, for free and to work on uh, these uh, events in the park. So I would just like to say, I mean, I couldn't agree more. We're, we're doing everything we can to, um, uh, to raise money to keep TRC moving in the right direction. And I think we're on the right path to do it. Um, we just would ask for a little help, and I, th I think we're going to get there. Commissioner Hodges. So, so when you came up here last year, I believe it was uh, the TRC, so they didn't request any revenue from the county, that the county just offered money, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, and so the county gave you $75,000 now, but now you are asking for more. Uh, the county gives the 60000 Or 60000 mm -hmm. to pay for security. So. So the event security and all that should be paid for with the sixty thousand dollars, but but you're asking for another seventy five thousand to take mm -hmm. care of a, a county owned plaza that mm -hmm. gives you all the revenues already from the county, gives you an employee for the county, right? Sure. You do sure. have an employee for the county. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I don't know how much more the county's got to give. Does the county does county parks and rec take care, maintain the park? No, they do not. They don't do anything with it. Okay. Mm -mm. Thank you. Commissioner Harper. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Norm, just a couple quick questions. I'm looking at the printout that you gave us as far as the rental income mm -hmm. that the parks provided. It's, and I'm looking from December of 17, right? Mm -hmm. And it is a total of $7,420. And the park's been open how long? Four months. Pars you know, it was open partially before that. Since April 18th. $7,420. It seems like there's a lot of effort it's that TRC has expended. Sure. Seems like to me it would make a lot more sense if rather than TRC being bundled together with, with that where you have a lot of time and effort that we let maybe Parks Department run that. I, and that way you'd be freed from that um, because it doesn't look like it's generating a lot of revenue. That was our purpose was to give you some revenue source, but sure. it, it doesn't appear to me that that's occurring. I so think, yeah. does, does that make any sense at all to you? Or? Sure. I understand that. I just don't think that, you know, it takes time to build it, whether you look at it as business or however you look at it. I mean, we've been been there less than four months. So, uh, you know, it take a little more time than four months to um, to make it successful. Any further thoughts on that or? I think I just think it takes time. I think uh, as we build on downtown and sundown and other great events that we have there, the revenue stream, you know, should build with it. Well, what's your projection going forward? That it will grow. As, as the events grow, then the, then the revenue will grow. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Red, do you have any plans to go to the city and ask them for funding as well? I have not. Why not? Uh, because they said they they, they never offered it. They can't give you any it. money because you employed a city council person. Uh, so no, I don't think that's the reason. Why not then? Uh, I'm not sure. They've you know they just hadn't supported. They haven't. They're holding back the thirty nine thousand that was allocated in 2014. So, so you don't have any plan to go in front of the city council and ask them for any funding. I haven't. No, sir. You don't. No, sir. Okay. Well, I'll just throw that out there. You might want to go mm -hmm. talk to them as well. Sure. Commissioner Gannon. Norm, don't you have some successful fundraising going on? I, do. I mean, you had the golf tournament, and don't you have some sponsorships that are starting to come online and things with different tournaments, sure. as well as bidding after four months at the park, other sources of revenue that are starting to come to fruition? Sure. To, to bring those up, I mean, it sounds like you're only making $7,000, but that's not necessarily the truth. Right. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, the Partners in Progress, um, that is a funding mechanism for TRC. Uh, we're up to about 24,000 uh, in, in funding for that. Uh, we just completed the second annual mayor's golf cup uh, that created uh, close $53,557 um, uh, clear. So it was a successful event. And one more thing, it was mentioned about you being in the, the county building. You're, you're, you have, you're in the process of moving out, is that correct? Yeah, so uh, to the building of 200 North 2nd, we're probably 30 days from, from moving the TRC offices out of the county courthouse. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just one thing, and you know, for what it's worth, because I've heard it mentioned a couple times since this conversation started, but if we turn the downtown commons over to county parks and rec, then we're still paying for it. Just want to make sure you know that. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Curian. Resolution 1888, resolution to amend the budgets of various funds for fiscal year 2019 in certain areas of revenue and expenditures. This is just our annual cleanup. Jeff, I don't think there's anything that's, the only thing that would be noteworthy in that is 
to keep from coming back if in fact the Fort Campbell thing does not it does not pass we will have to amend 1888 because it has the revenues already uh, as part of that uh, resolution to amend the budget is that not correct mr. Taylor yes sir as well as the um, money for additional employees yeah yeah for additional employees and and the services that we would be providing for the pets that Fort right. Campbell would pay for any questions on 1888 uh, we have our airport report our school liaison report gentlemen I don't know if there's anything noteworthy y'all want to add we're uh, into this a little over an hour already or two hours already any any anything Commissioner Genus or Commissioner Jason Hodges that you'd like to add no, we didn't have a okay under uh, county mayor appointments there's no approval necessary just as a matter of information the Montgomery County Fair Committee Condra Smalley Jerry Albert Steve Gursky, John Gannon, and Commissioner Charlie Keene, who's appointed to replace Joe White, will all be reappointed to that committee. Under your reports filed, you'll see there's a lengthy uh, list of reports that are filed. I don't know if anyone has any questions on that. Uh, I know of no old business. Under our, under our announcements, the Tennessee County Commissioners Association Re Regional Meeting this year will be on September 13 at the Catfish House in Springfield, Tennessee, beginning with registration at 530 in the mill at 6. If you would, mark your calendars and more information will follow. And then due to Labor Day falling on Mon Monday, September 3rd, our informal commission meeting will be held on Tuesday, September the 4th. Any other announcements? Yeah, that September 4th will be uh, also be the swearing-in ceremony. I, I, I don't. I think we have several of our new uh, elected county commissioners here. Uh, I'd like for y'all to stand up, and be recognized, if you would, or and soon to be appointed. Thank y'all for being here. All right, with no further business, we'll stand adjourned. Thank y'all.